Hello everyone, this is Yusai. Welcome to Let's Talk. And this week and this month actually is Asia Pacific Heritage Month in the United States. And with that, we paired up with Nomad Management to invite Asian models to come on the show to talk about their journey, how they travel from the east to the west and west back to the east and how they're representing Asian culture throughout runways and print and how they're representing themselves throughout culture differences in the fashion industry. And today, my model is a runway phenomenon Easy, how are you from South Korea? Hi guys, how are you? Thank you for having me today. Well, thank you for joining us. I know it's 6 a.m. in South Korea. <laughs> it's 2 p.m. here in Los Angeles and 5 p.m. Eastern time in New York City. And we're so glad that you can join us. So let's jump right in and let's talk. So you saw the modeling in a really unique way. You were actually at a party and got discovered. Share that part of the story with us. Uh, so I started, I mean, I was at a party, I was like, I was hanging with my friends at a party, and then I got scouted by a um, Korean designer, and then I had to, I had a chance to work with his brand, that was my first shoot ever as a model, and then I started modeling after that. <laughs> That's an interesting path. It's different from a lot of models. A lot of models get spotted on Instagram, and some mm -hmm. days that they are spotted by scouts, uh, agents that uh, walk around the mall, or walk down the store, and see them. So you were actually at a party where a designer was there, and he found liking of you, and he just asked you to be part of the show right away. No, he was like he first asked me that he was confused that about my uh, my sex. Like a female, Your gender? Your yeah, gender. gender. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he he came to me and he asked he asked like, are you are you a boy or are you a girl? So I was like, I'm a girl. And then he he was interested in me. And then he was like, Oh, I can give you my phone number so we can get in touch. And then I did the shoot for his friend. When he asked you that question, and I'm sure you get that a lot in the industry, being somebody who kind of have a label now being androgynistic in the most positive way. When somebody asks you that, when a designer at a party who doesn't know you asks you that question, does that make you upset? Oh, uh, not really. Like, like at first, kind of it bothered, it bothered me a little bit because, because like, like Korea is more like traditional, you know, like girls have to look like girls and boys have to look like boys, kind of. So at first I was a little bothered, but now I'm I'm like, whatever, because I'm who I am and you guys don't know me exactly. So I'm like, I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> well, it's not that you don't care. You have the confidence to be who you are and nobody can tell you to be any different. I think that's yes. very important. And and I know that in the industry now, we definitely see you as a model that represent androgyny, meaning that you can be both boys or girls on the runway. You have open shows both for men's shows as women's show in Milan, all the way to Paris, Paris to New York. And through this journey, do you ever question whether or not you want to be more represented in a boy market or a girl market oh uh, both <laughs> great <laughs> why not when you can have both right yeah both because... and, and, and was it like that when you were growing up was it like that that were you always uh, this this androgynistic tomboyish and not a very girly girl when you were growing up oh uh, yes because uh, when i was young i love wearing like pants and skirts and then in high school, I also wear a uh, boy's uniform mm. because it was more comfortable and it was more warmer in, in winter. So I, so maybe, yes, I think I grew up like more uh, tomboy style and like that. <laughs> and were your parents supportive? Were they like, we, we need you like Barbies. We like you to play with, wear more dresses. You wanted to wear lipstick when you play with makeup. Was your parents very influential in that way? 
No, 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 no. My parents, my parents wanted me more like pretty, like girls things. But that didn't work for you. And I was like, nope. <laughs> but they must wonder. They, they, um, as a parent, they must wonder if you did not want to dress like girls, you must like girls. They, they must wonder about your sexuality. Was that a question growing up for oh, them? No, I. They never ask ask me about my sexuality preference. Sexual yes, preference. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I know a lot of people ask you that now, yes, right? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you set the record straight and tell everybody here you like boys or do you like girls or men or women? Oh, uh, I think I like all all people. <laughs> Um, that's not, well, gender, gender fluidity is a great thing, and it's not that we're we're, in a, we're definitely in the environment and in the cultural uh, revolution of non-judgment and and having uh, gender undefined is probably the best place to be. But in the fashion world, as you know, that we like to put people in categories, whether they're editorial models or they're beauty models, and you hit the runway in a, such a way that startup have created such conversation, especially in the Asian culture. You know, being androgynous in Korea, how was that? How is it being you and your style type of model in South Korea? Oh, uh, so uh, I think like girls with like really short hair in Korea, I think I was the first one actually with that kind of hairstyle. So mm. I think that was the point that everyone started to know me as a fashion mm -hmm. model and then that was the point to work with high uh, high fashion brands or high fashion magazines so i think it was a <clears throat> it was a new new try but i think it worked well for for me so the, the, the Korean market really embraced your difference, the, the yes, idea yes. of you being non-traditional. And, and, and so you were breaking boundaries just by shaving your head, dyeing it red, dyeing it blonde. Mm. Some days you were, you were blonde, some days you go back to black hair. And you were actually making a statement uh, without even knowing you were making a statement, breaking boundaries. So I know you had a successful career in Korea in the very beginning. Right away, you were working for Al, you were working for Vogue in Korea. What desire did you have at that time to start traveling abroad? What was the reasoning that you even thought, oh, this is not it enough, I want to do more? Uh, uh, working abroad is like literally every, every mo model stream, I think. So, so I wanted my career to be stronger and I wanted, I wanted to work with some new clients like so that's why i decided to work abroad like before it's too late but did you know anything about fashion before you got onto the runway and work with this designer who um give me his give me his name again and the brand that that discovered you oh push, uh, push button yeah and Sungon park and he, when he gave you the opportunity at that time, were you thinking about fashion already? Did you love fashion growing up? Did you flip through magazine and say, oh, I can be a model? Mm, no. <laughs> I was just a student. I was just a university student. And what were you time. studying? What were you studying at that time? Uh, fashion marketing. So you were in, in a way in a fashion, you, you had an understanding of fashion business. You understand the, mm -hmm. the terminology and the ideology of this business. So going into it wasn't so blind and you actually know that the business side of it. Yeah, but I never thought that I would like, really, I would get into modeling. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. So now, now, how did you start your first abroad trip? Give us that journey. How did you go from South Korea and started traveling? Oh, okay. So um, I met Roman in Korea at a backstage of a fashion show. And Roman and Young is the, the co-founder, co-owner of Nomad Management. Yeah. And then he introduced himself as a model agent. And then he asked me, about working abroad and I, I was like okay maybe this is the 
this is like the only chance that I could literally work abroad. And it, I thought that I have to get this chance that came mm. to me. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go. Okay. It's great. I, I was like this. I was like, okay, I want to work abroad. Well, you were very fortunate and lucky to have Norm, um, Roman Young to find you and, and be able to scale you because the opportunity from, from Asia to, to the U.S. or abroad to Europe, it's not as easy as people think. It's not just buying an airline ticket and be able to go. You got to get sponsorships. You got to have visa. You have to have agents that really believe in you, you know? And, and I talked to so many different models that are represented by Nomad. We hear different stories, how they're discovered, whether from a runway, whether from relationship from one model to the other. And, but ultimately at the end is really trusting that agent that, that, that approach you and you find the trust to say, yes, I will do it. And then they take care of you along the way. So your first trip, where did you go? New York. I went to New York. <laughs> Actually, like if I, I also in nowadays, I also think that if it wasn't, I mean, if Roman wasn't there, I think I wouldn't go abroad because it's really hard, like you said, like there are so many things to you know like prepare and handle but roman helped me a lot at that time and then that's why i um i got to meet like like great agencies great agents and then all the visas and stuff like roman helped me all, all the way through so, so if it was you did you have a different agent in Korea? Yes. And then did Norman become your mother agent? Yep. Well, it's yep. good to have them as your mother. Right? Yeah. <laughs> to yeah, support I mean, he's, you. He's super kind, you know. He's like, he cares. He cares. He takes care of me. Yeah, he takes care of me. <laughs> like, like all oh, when I was like, when I first went to New York and I, I, everything was like so new and I'm like, I'm like, wow, am I, am I, am I in, in, in America? Like, am I in, in New York? I didn't know anything. And then Roman helped me out. And, you know, when you first came to, to, to New York and, and, and started to have castings, how was, how were people responding to your look and your aesthetic and, and, and your beauty? Mm, they told me that you look great with your blonde short hair. <laughs> yes. And then it looks good on you. They, mm. they told me it looks good on you. So I felt very thankful. And were the questions of your androgynous look, did that come up? Did people question you about uh, whether you're more masculine, more feminine? Was that a conversation that comes up a lot? Oh, mm, little bit, little bit. Mm. Mm. When when yeah. I when I have like interview or something, they just ask me like, "Is this your your uh, favorite style right mm. now?" Kind of like those questions. And well, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is me. I'm not. Yeah. This is exactly <laughs> who I am. But I think it's so brave to, to, to travel, and especially, you know, to come from, from, from South Korea. And I know you and I have talked and you have told me that your English wasn't really good then and had to develop over the last few years that you really worked on it. And I know it, English is second language in, in the U.S. It's, it's very difficult because once you speak English, it's international language that when you're in Paris, Milan, it does really help. But when you first started with English, was your and a, really a barrier and you in a new city, what are some of the difficulties that you had to go through? Oh, like all my families and friends are all in Korea and then I had to travel alone. So loneliness was part of some, her some, some problem and also money because rent in America is like really expensive. <laughs> more expensive than Korea. So those kind of things were a little hard for me at first. Hmm. That's before you started making money. 
yeah and then later i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> well do you remember the very first big job in us that you got do you remember that moment yes and which which client was it and what can you share that story with us uh it was a alexander wang show in new york and then uh i should their campaign also so that was like one of my first and big job i did in america so that was really unforgettable and i had to wait wait the casting like the line was like this long like this long and then <laughs> The weather was so cold. I was waiting like this, and then I went. I went inside the building, and I saw Alex. And then I was like, "Hi!" And then I had I had a well, I had to, and I I walked in front of me, uh, in front of him, and and he was like, he really. I think he really liked me. So he he his response was good. <laughs> and then <laughs> later I heard that I. I got confirmed for his campaign. So wow. it's so refreshing to hear that your first big job in the US is actually from an Asian uh, designer and an Asian brand that embraced the uh, embraced you but you're so you're so different than what we classically think of an Asian model, right? We there's so many different Asian models different types but when you came to the scene in the fashion world, you really did take it on in a hard hit of androgyny. And I know we begin to look at you and people always question. And I love when people continue to question because when they question, that means they want to know more about you. And you were very mysterious because you're not heavy handed on Instagram. You didn't post a lot of stuff at that time. Um, so there was a lot, of, a lot of buzz around you, the newcomer. You know, you were the, the newcomer in, 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 uh, from, from South Korea. Did you feel pressure to perform? Did you feel pressure that you had to do something differently to maintain? your position in fashion oh uh, yes because i want to show people uh new styles every time so that mm -hmm. was one of my pressure uh, in a good way in a good mm -hmm. way and then also like the newcomer thing made me uh it made me to work harder, you know, to maintain and to and to keep to stay steady. So, yes. <laughs> and, and I, I think that we see that in your career. We see that in the last few years that you have gone from blonde to red hair, from red hair to long hair, to a pixie cut to a long cut. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that is so lovely to see as you develop as a model is that even though your hair may change, but your personal style stays true to who you are. You really are this this rugged tomboy but with a feminine edge that that when you walk the runway for a women's show you still hold on to that femininity and then when you're on the men's show you rock that walk like you're a badass boy and it does i think that's what we love fashion so much right it is a transformation mm -hmm. for that for that 30 second or a minute walking down the runway is to create fantasy and create create different dimensions in our business and and I think, you know, you have really, really broke the boundary of that notion of traditional Asian beauty. Because now you are the new beauty. You are representing that new beauty. And I, I hope you know that. I hope that 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 is something that you embrace and you treasure and 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 be proud that you've got to be who you are and 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 be recognized for it. I think that's the hardest thing for most models. Uh, or for most people in general, right? In people in, in general, we we have a tendency to to not love ourselves sometimes. And and in fashion world, guys out there, you're listening. It's very easy for the outside noise to remind us that we're not tall enough, we're not beautiful enough, we're not Asian enough. And we hear that a lot in in the Asian community. Well, you're not Asian enough to be an Asian model. I don't even know what that means, by the way. But but we hear that and. And, and I, I want to have a talk with you today for that very reason that you represent Asia in such a different way, such a powerful way. And, and you get to represent men and women. And that's a conversation that it, it's, it's, it's profound for, for people who are watching and can learn that beauty is not defined by what fashion tells you. Beauty is defined by the people who 
want to be in fashion and makes it in fashion and tell you what beauty is. And that's a conversation if we can continue to change and evolve. I think we're going to see different faces all the time every season. You know, Alexander Wang himself, beautiful long hair, and he's very living loudly the way he is. And I love that and so proud of that, that he can send that persona forward and the fact that he put you on the runway, embraced everything about you, and didn't try to change you and really, uh, you know, really put a spotlight on you by putting you in a campaign that says loudly about who he is as a designer, you know? And, and for you, for you, you signed with a New York agency with a great friend of mine, actually. You signed with the Lions, and that was to yeah. Nomad's relationship. Tell me about that transition. When you signed with another agency in New York, how did your career begin to change? Uh, so I, uh, I signed with the Lions, and then they wanted, they, they, they kind of, they kind of keep me very tight and very, uh, very focused. Yes, focused. And so I don't really, I don't use my image so fast. You know what I mean? Yes, the, 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 the one, the, they were making sure that you were paired up with the right clients. You weren't diluting your image. They wanted to keep you in a higher uh, bracket of model, more exclusive. Yes, oh, sorry, my English is so bad. So. No, it's perfect. <laughs> and and then and then uh, uh, the question was how oh, oh, oh and then after I signed with the Lions and then I get to do more more high quality jobs that made me plus for my career of course and then after after some some great works with great clients I came back <clears throat> I went back to Korea and then everybody was like oh my gosh easy yours you're great and then I got to do more jobs in Korea more magazines more shows like absolutely different than before I I work abroad, so that is my answer about about changing. And then I think what, what's important to know for those models, aspiring models out there, when you sign with agency like Nomad, who actually a mother agency of management, they place you with agencies that they feel is best fit for you. They have relationship with so many different agents out there, but they don't just place with whoever. They find an agency that truly understand your aesthetic, your beauty, and know how to market you. And I know that that that's exactly how Ali, the director owner of Lions, does with his girls. And he really does take the time to, to figure out a strategy and, and working with Nomad to come up with an idea and build a new constitution for your brand. You know, that's, that's really mm -hmm. important. But the thing is, it's so important that people know you as a model had to trust them. If you didn't trust them to guide you where you would go and do less work, but better quality work, mm -hmm. your career wouldn't be where it is today. Mm, yes, <laughs> but I kind of, I kind of, after uh, I went some few agency in, agencies in New York, I came back to Korea and I was talking with Roman about, about which agency uh, fits best for me. Mm. And then, and then Roman recommended me Lions and I was like, yeah, okay. Because I, I didn't know like, anything about about like working abroad so i just trusted roman and then i just trusted my my agency in new york and then i don't i don't regret that i think i did the best decision I think. oh i think you did too <laughs> i think you did an excellent decision yeah. now how long did you stay on the in new york how long did you stay in the western hemisphere before you went back to korea oh uh, like three to four months before fashion week and after fashion week and then i came back to korea and spent some time with my parents and then i i went back to new york for fashion week is new york your second home now 
Yeah, I miss New York. I kind of <laughs> miss New York right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice to know. That it, it mm -hmm. definitely, I'm sure New York is she was a second home. And and now, what is it? What is it you look forward to now? Now you have conquered New York. You've done Paris. You've done Milan. You've done all. You've done London. You and you've done big brands. What is that you aspire to accomplish next? Oh, I want to stay steady you know i i want to keep up with my works i've done until now and then if i have chance i want to work with new clients also so i can you know improve my career more better so and then i want to keep the good relationship with other models and <laughs> agents and clients that's my that's my goal goals but right now I, th I think it's so good to know that that you have broken the ground in new york and you have done so many other different brands but you still go home and back to asia and bring all the knowledge you have learned and all the experience that you have back to asia and still continue to work in asia and, and it is true that for models that who work abroad uh, paris milan all of it, London and New York, and then when they go back to where they originate, it does change the career. But it's so important to know that that's really good place to be because that's where home is. And then once you reset your energy and you discover who you are all over again at home, you can then travel again yeah. and be everywhere. You know, and and I think that happens a lot in our Asian culture. If your family's in Asia, you go back home. It is it is something that we just innately do, you know. And we 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 any opportunity we can to be with our family is a culture thing. I truly believe it's a big big culture thing. You now for for me too, like when I had the opportunity to go back to Asia to do production, I want to go home and, and and be with the people who are like. And and I grew up in America, and I'm American, Asian American, and and I've been here since I was twelve years old. But no matter what, I am going to see my own reflections Asian. Therefore, I respect the heritage of the culture. <laughs> and, you know, I don't think we yeah, have... Yeah, yeah, like, Asian, like, family is the best. <laughs> family comes first, like, kind of cultural thing. It, it is. And, and, and I think so, listen, I was younger, like you, I was very rebellious against it. I did not want to eat rice. I just said, like, can I just eat burgers? I just want, to, you know, I want mm -hmm. fried chicken hamburger. That's it. I don't want to eat rice because we have this tendency to try to run away from, from who we are so we can belong, especially in a Western culture. But now I, I, I eat rice every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud of it and I'm happy for it. So... So your parents, are they, are they extremely proud and, and happy for the career path that you're on now? Uh, at first, my parents like hated me doing modeling because wow. they, thought, they thought that this model thing is not stable job compared to other jobs. Like it's very- um, Unstable. Unstable. So my parents didn't want me to be part of of this fashion industry but now after some some works I've done I show them my pictures I show them like my runway pictures and stuff and now they're my biggest supporters did you show them your paycheck oh uh, yeah but... <laughs> <laughs> that does help to, you know, and the thing is, I think what you just said is so important to touch upon is that it's not that your family didn't love the fashion industry. They were more worried about you being in the industry that's not stable. It's not a consistent nine to five. It's not a job that every day you wake up, you know, you're going to get paid. You're going to work, mm -hmm. right? In fact, in fashion, we do a lot of work for free, guys. Photographers work for free all the time when we shoot editorials and models too. You guys show up for free all the time until you get opportunity to get booked on jobs that actually pay. And even on runways, sometimes you get clothes. Even you don't like the clothes, that's what you're getting. <laughs> you're not, you're not getting true, a true, true, true. Right? <laughs> So I think sometimes really funny when I see on Instagram, when I see lots of models wearing the best amazing clothes, but then their wallet's empty because 
they, they, they're not getting paid by, by money, <laughs> by currency. The currency is actually trading clothes. And, and you know, maybe they'll sell it to make some <laughs> put money in the wallet. <laughs> but, and, and, but I think it's important to touch that, that mm -hmm. yes, Asian family are more conservative. And a lot of time it's not because they don't want you to venture away from being a doctor or engineer or, mm -hmm. or a lawyer. It's because they just really want to make sure that you choose a profession that has stability. And with yeah, stability, yeah. you can take care of your own family in the future, mm. right? So I think that was the major reason why my parents didn't really like me doing modeling. And now they're incredibly supportive. They're the biggest fan, I'm sure. My, my dad, my, uh, he carries the a magazine oh, with that him is... in his car and show it to his parents like hey this is your granddaughter like that is the coolest thing now i gotta ask this your mom must be so happy to see you on a runway wearing a dress sometimes yeah uh that's why um i text her like hey mom i'm, I'm doing this show like like at like 2 p.m and so Korea, it's it will be like for example one a.m. So you, can you watch it on live? And my mom's like, sure, like of course. And then she takes picture of me and send it to me later. And I was like, so sweet. Well, I absolutely love the fact that you didn't love fashion the way traditional uh, person would love fashion. You didn't want to dress up at all when you were young. You wanted to wear pants, and you still do. And the fact that you now become the model, you become the mold that people want to dress you and be able to dress you in so many different ways. That's versatility is incredible as a model. You are very, very blessed to have this journey. Mm, yes. And... I don't know, like, I think that, like, if I didn't do modeling, I think I wouldn't travel this much. Like, going to airport, like, t taking flights and stuff. So I think it's new experiences I can experience in my age, like, not other, my friends couldn't experience what I do. So that's really... A good thing. Well, we, we hope that you you don't only come to New York or Paris and everywhere else only because of Fashion Week. I think, I think you from the runway. We need to see you more in print. We need to see you more in campaigns, and I hope to see you more in other different beauty brands. I think that's when it really becomes a really becomes a conversation for us when we begin to see an untraditional mold being broken, a traditional mold being broken with untraditional beauty. I think that is so important. And I said that with the utmost respect that, you know, classic beauty for Asian culture, it is the pale face and the perfect nose and round eyes and double slit eye lines and, and perfect thin brow. And, and we have that stereotype. And I think we're beginning to change that with somebody like you and embraced by designers who's wanting to open that conversation for other people to see that Asian comes in different faces, Asian come in different sizes, and Asian comes in different genders, and for you, both gender, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and that's, that's the most refreshing thing to see. And the fact that, you know, we have to give Nomad a credit for the fact that they saw you and they didn't judge you in the way, in a negative way. They, they embrace you in your such a, uh, diversity and the inclusion that we need so badly in a Western culture to have you come to the United States, have you go to New York, have you go to casting and put you in front of people so you can change their mind what traditional beauty is and will be from now on. You know, that's yeah, really they, they, they just, they just think me as just myself, not like other things, like just you and this is your style. So please be confident that this is are you confident are you confident with your personal style no no no. They, they told me to be more you can be more confident with your style and i was like okay i will i will <laughs> and, and and it's true because i'm sure growing up we all have insecurity you probably 
go through the same thing that we all go through when we're younger like oh maybe i should wear more skirts sometimes or maybe i want to belong to something and maybe i should grow my hair long and have bangs like everybody else that's doing mm -hmm. so what what is it that you think that made you stick to who you are and stay true to who you are through all this oh uh, i think Accepting every kind of new style made me more myself because that that made that helped me to not stick in the original you know girlish style because working abroad like I see many 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 different people with with their own styles so that made that made me <clears throat> well. Uh, I can also be like them, you know. I can accept all other new styles people uh, suggest, and then I accept it. And, and then all my career was came to me. <laughs> so I think that is the. Uh, sorry, my 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 English is so bad. I I just want to be more i just want to explain more but but my you're doing great you're doing great i understand <laughs> and so do you so in this in this journey that as you have transformed do you do you struggle to make sure you stay unique and different all the time yeah. no 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 i don't i don't struggle i just just do it naturally i love that yeah i just think <laughs> naturally like Hey Z, how about changing your style like this? I'm like, okay. How about like bleaching your, okay. And that's why it makes you a great model that you're wanting to just evolve and, and, and adjust. But truly that doesn't matter how people try to change you. Your pictures, all your picture has an essence mm. of who you really are as a person. How you model, how you pose really doesn't depart away from the fact that we know is you is your signature and that's mm. that is what we need in modeling i think the days of modeling being just a canvas a blank canvas for a designer or for a magazine editor is no longer true i think for modeling now um asian models black models white models whatever brown models yellow models i think it's more about bringing part of you always bring part of you who you are to the pictures and that I think is more powerful than just being a mannequin. Because if you don't want personality from models, you don't want the true essence of who they are, then just shoot the clothes on a mannequin. There's no mm -hmm. reason to put a model uh, in front of you and, and put clothes on them and have them not be able to express who they are. And that's, mm -hmm. that is so important. And do you feel pressure being an Asian model that is leading this path of difference? Oh, yes, because uh, I always make sure, I always think about my behavior when I work or when I go or when I do something. Because if I don't do, if I have problem with my behavior, I think all Korean, other Korean girls will also get blamed, which is very, very, very important thing. <laughs> Well, it's very unselfishness of you to make sure that you are taking care of other people's reputation by behaving a certain way. And, and that's, that's very, very honest. And I, I think, I think, you know, I don't think you need to carry that responsibility. I don't think, I think you can, I think no, individually. Like, I think it's like this because like we're all Koreans and we all work in the same fashion industry. So if I don't, you know, if I don't behave well, like, like other people might think that they're all that all same. Koreans are all yeah, the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, they're all <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So, well, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough for for being kind to the <laughs> to other people's reputation. But I promise you, if another Korean model on my set's a total bitch, I won't think you are. Don't you no. worry. <laughs> And just for the record, there hasn't been one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there hasn't been one. And perhaps because all Korean models, all Korean ladies are making sure they're not bad. Now, I know that in, 
in 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 the fashion industry in Korea, beauty is absolutely is such a big market. To to skincare is something mm -hmm. that is so huge, and because of that, that cultural importance. When you travel abroad, you bring that knowledge to us too, right? In the U.S., up the last five years, we've been obsessed with Korean beauty. We've been obsessed with Korean products. You know, how do you see the industry evolve in the future with the Asian influence? Oh, first of all, Korean Korean cosmetic brands or Korean skincare brands, they are perfect. They're the like best. amazing. <laughs> and then Oh, and I'm, don't let me forget, send me a care package to make this better. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, later when, when we when after this whole situation co going on right now if this ends we can you know i can give you some skincare routine tips or something <laughs> but i think i think korean market is going to get bigger and bigger because <clears throat> when i go sh on like some shooting and stuff like makeup team they sometimes ask me oh your your skin looks perfect and i think all asian skins are really 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 good i'm like yeah because <laughs> our <laughs> our you know like our skincare thing is all so perfect already so and also um, uh k-pop you know k-pop singers like you know bts kind of like all the fans they do all the makeup with korean you know so that's also uh, a reason why korean market is going to get better because everyone's like so into into like what kind of what kind of things do you use or like what kind of product do you use and i think korean culture and models and especially in the men men industry it has allowed us in the Western culture to understand being beautiful men is okay. And because when Korean men are beautiful, and I, I will say this, and I'll hold true to that, they're prettier than women. They are so incredibly yes, true, true. beautiful. And I think that's why you are the perfect example of that because I have seen you as the most beautiful men and I've seen you as the most beautiful women. And I, and I, I hope today that a beauty campaign offer you a major contract for both men and women's line. And that would be my hope and dream that the world will, in a fashion will embrace your beauty in that way. Because that's in, then is a true validation of inclusion within our own Asian culture. Because when we talk about inclusion all the time in the West, we're talking about making sure we have Hispanic, making sure we have Asian, making sure we have black people, make sure we are very a binaton type of environment, a melting pot. But within our own culture itself, there's so many divisions that we need to look at and allow that, in, that, that inclusion within ourselves. It's okay to have short blonde hair and it's still considered beautiful and feminine. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to have long, gorgeous hair with lipstick and still be masculine. I yeah. think when we can cross over all those boundaries with your help, with, with your, with your <laughs> just being you, truly just being you and being the guidance of an agency that put you out there and your amazing team and Nomad and Lions that continue to put your faces forward to clients, it's a constant reminder that we have so much to learn still and we have so much to grow. And, and you're, you don't realize it, but you see, you are a teacher to people oh. in this industry. <laughs> and you may not realize that, but there's a reason why I chose and woman chose that we should talk because just being you, the fact that you said, this is me and this is who I am and people are beginning to embrace it and they want me to be more me when I work. You don't hear that five years ago, I promise you. Models are just mannequins, but now you guys have a voice and you have a voice for both men and women and you have a voice both East and West, and that's a powerful voice, you know? That really is a powerful position to be in. And just keep spreading the positivity of being you. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Life is too, life is too short for listening all kind of- Noise. Noises, <laughs> which doesn't help. Life is too short for that, I mean, we have to 
be ourselves and live our life. I think that's the most important thing about what I think. <laughs> But that's 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 important value, especially in the Asian culture. That that to have that at such a young age, I have to say I didn't think that way when I was younger. You know, we're taught to be very different. We we're taught to approach work different. We're taught not to ask questions and just do. We're taught that elders, whatever the elder said, those are the right thing. And for you, have an opportunity to. To be able to be you and have a supportive team around you, your agents, your mom, your dad, and、mm -hmm. your proud father sharing with your grand <laughs> grandfather. But that that's the new evolution of our, our our industry, and that is the that is the inclusion that we need. We need inclusion at our home, home, and our own where we grow up. That they're proud of what you do, and they can support what you do. And 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 and, and they're right. It is not an easy path. It's not modeling is not an easy career to be, but、mm. I can tell you this: models are three dimensional now, right? You're not、yeah. only modeling clothes; you're sharing your stories, you're inspiring others, and I'm sure that lots of Korean girls who want to be models are listening to you right now and say, "Wow, okay, I can be beautiful as who I am."、Mm -hmm. You know, I I I, I can't, and and it's okay. You want to label me a man or woman as long as I get to be me. And that's okay. And 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 you're more mature for your age. You're wiser than your age, and you're already in a, such amazing place. I know your career will just skyrocket the moment this thing、oh, is over. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I will be honored, and will always be joyful, and and love to be able to share a, a studio with you and shoot together and create together. Because that that you're you're not only a type of model I love. But who you are as a human being and what you represent is everything I strive to, 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 to live for. You know, I really do because everybody lives loudly in a very different way, and、mm -hmm. and I love the fact that you're living your way, and we just happen to be visitors, and we get to see it,、mm -hmm. and we get to join you when you invite us in. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying so nicely. It, it's it's you know it thank no thank you so much absolutely and、mm -hmm. and and continue to work really hard and I want to thank you for being here with me today. I know it's really early where you are and and I can't wait for us to work together. I can't wait. Thank you for having me today and I'm so sorry about not. Explaining more specific about everything because my English is like you don't get to apologize for that because the it like, you don't need to say much just be you <laughs> that's the point next that, time if we have a chance to talk again I'm going to be more fluent with my English <laughs> thank you beautiful thank you for, thank you thank for <clears throat> inviting me today. Well, thank you, Norman Young, for making this week such a powerful week for the Asian community, and thank you for continuing to support the Asian community. And I also want to really give Coco Rocha a shout out. On Wednesday, I had an opportunity to speak to her. If you guys haven't had a chance to watch it, it is on YouTube now on my channel, You Side Film. Take a look at it. Listen to the conversation we had because what she has done for our Asian community is resilient. I love what she has done. I love what what this agency represents and. The placement of the models to other agencies, how they watch out for them, and every single model I've come to from that agency that I have got to interview thus far have said nothing but great praises. And in the world of fashion, we need safety nets and we need support, and we need people like Nomad, and we need people like Roman Young, and we need people like Coco Rocha continue to speak loudly and be champion for young models. So I thank you guys for that, and thank you again, Easy, for being with me, and I will、thank、see you, you. soon. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. What an amazing day today. What an amazing conversation to be had today. And I'm just so grateful and so proud of this week and then be able to shine light on the Asian community and talk about how important our culture is and how important cultural inclusion within our own own community and also how we. Continue to break boundaries with 
with the ideology of what is beautiful versus what is what is a gender uh, gender definitions and how we look at aesthetic, how we continue to push those boundaries in every way we can in the fashion industry. That is what we need to do and continue to educate. I think people like Jason Wu and I like think I think designer like like um, like I was in her way who really recognized models out there that give them opportunity and chances to hit the runways because with that we continue to break the perpetuation of what standard Asian models should be like rather than uh, than they should be and we continue to push it to make sure that everybody knows they are not all the same and we don't all look alike and individually they have their own voice and we should give them the opportunity to share it with that everyone thank you so much for being with me here today Thank you.